All right, well, I figured out uh, part of the problem with this blaster is this nozzle has to be on the top, this red thing, red tube. If it goes down on the side, then the water just goes in there and blocks it. So that's probably a big part of the problem yesterday. Uh, I went through a couple buckets of sand. Got this radiator support looking real nice. And the steering arms. Not totally done, but uh, still going to need a little bit more work, but a lot better than it was. All right, I got this radiator support looking real nice. That blaster got working, and uh, got both both sides. I put some metal prep in there. Get this ready for paint. I went ahead and picked up one of these blast guns for 20 bucks. Uh, I was thinking about picking up a blast cabinet for 150 but I only need to do a few small things so I went ahead and went with this. I got rid of my Harbor Freight 40 pound sand blaster. Uh, that thing did not work at all. I could never get anything to blast out of that. Uh, this works 100% better. Nice and easy and uh, all the paint is coming off these little parts in little crevices uh, that I missed with the pressure washer uh, dustless blasting kit that I have so yeah this is going to be great for nuts and bolts and just a few odd pieces that I need to blast all right I got my rear shocks in the mail today uh, I also received my leaf spring shackles uh, comes with the bushings so I got two of those I also got these u-bolts that mount up the rear uh, differential housing up to the leaf springs <coughs> and uh, I also got the rear part bushings that go into these uh, upper control arms so these were the ones that were 143 bucks, and I'm just getting ready to uh, paint a bunch of parts, and I'll start installing uh, the bushings and the ball joints in here. I went ahead and got rid of that uh, flux core welder and upgraded to a titanium MIG 140. Uh, this one will uh, hook up to gas, so that I can do nice welds on these body panels without burning holes through and creating a lot of spatter so next step here is to go pick up a bottle of gas so I've been doing some research on uh, installing uh, these this pinion and this whole the whole mechanics here inside this case um, first you have to set the pinion depth and to get the right tool to set that depth is about 450 bucks for the for a good tool for that. Uh, so I pretty much decided I'm not going to do it myself. There's a lot more to it. You have to set the the bearing side adjustment on there, uh, and you have to do a contact test with, by painting the the gears with a special grease paint and seeing where the gears bite in. So <clears throat> I'm going to leave that all to a professional. Uh, I called around, tried to talk to about five, six different mechanics about that. Nobody wanted to talk to me. Nobody would call me back. The ones that did talk to me said they couldn't help me. I finally found a guy down at uh, Volusia Drivetrain. So he's a specialist who does this. And he's going to install this in here and set all that for me for 250 um, we talked about the uh, 430 gear setup, and <clears throat> that's really going to make it hard to drive on the highway with that gears. Uh, it's too, it's going to, you know, too high RPMs. It's going to tear up everything. My gas mileage is going to go to hell. So I looked it up, and uh, back in 1958, the correct gearing for this was a 373. Uh, it also came with a 331 so I'm gonna order a new gear set for a couple hundred bucks 
uh, and we're going to do a 355 gear which is right in between so uh, between the gearing set and he wants me to order a new master bearing kit too so I'm looking at about uh, 550 bucks to put this case together so yeah, it has to be done. That's what I'm going to have to do. Alright, I took uh, one of these axles out of this housing. I'm going to take the other one out. Um, you know, these are used axles, and I'm not sure how good a shape they're in. Uh, I'm going to take them down to Volusia Drive Train and have him take a look at them and give me a recommendation, but uh, I might be ordering brand new axles for 350 so by the time I'm all in on this drivetrain it's probably going to be close to $1,900 $2,000 so still probably saved about $800 or more over what I was going to spend on eBay but uh, I just want to make sure everything is brand new and works perfect and I don't have to tear this thing back apart for anything. I talked to uh, the guy that's uh, making my leaf springs for about 400 some dollars. These are the shackles I got today. New sh or these are what I got, the old shackles. I got new ones to replace these. Uh, he's telling me that uh, these are custom made they don't just stock these off the shelf so this is going to be about five weeks until I get these leaf springs in the guy that's rebuilding my case wants me to order up a bearing kit so I've been looking for this uh, 489 bearing kit and they have different ones ones for early carrier bearings ones for late um, there's different uh, journal diameters for the carrier bearing. So, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but uh, I've been trying to figure it out, uh, measuring everything that I can. So, I'm going to keep trying to measure it. All right, so I kept trying to measure a lot of surfaces in here, couldn't come up with anything. I was measuring a bunch of these bearings, didn't come up with anything. Um, finally, I did end up getting a, a reading off of this one here. So that's two inches. So the measurement was either going to be 1.8 inches or two inches. So I'm going to say that that right there is the carrier bearing journal inner diameter. Yes. So I guess you, you learn something new every day. I got these bushings in for uh, the rear leaf springs and uh, when I took those shackles off I had to actually cut through the bolts because they were too rusted. They wouldn't just screw off. So I left uh, the bushing and the bolt cut off inside here. So now I'm pressing this out and it's going slow, but it seems to be coming out a little bit at a time. All right, so the end of this C-clamp end up getting stuck in here. Um, I barely was able to get that C-clamp off and I did scuff up the paint. So I'm gonna have to repaint that. But uh, for a minute there, it didn't seem like this was gonna come out. I did get it out with the vice grips. So from here, I'm gonna try again, try to push it out some more with a socket, and we're gonna see if we can get that that bolt to stick out a little bit more. All right, I did manage to finally get that out with the sledgehammer and uh, this uh, socket extension, and uh, went ahead and touched up that paint, and I'm ready to put in some bushings. Okay, this one came out a little bit easier and these bushings fit perfectly. Just push them in and you're good to go. 
And I got all these uh, small parts, sandblasted, wire wheeled, down to bare metal. Everything's looking real clean. And I'm going to hit them with epoxy primer. And then hit them with some gloss black automotive paint. Alright, I managed to get all these parts in primer. Uh, it was not easy. I had them all hanging up out there and then uh, got the gun hooked up and went to go spray and the gun was clogged. So then I had to spend 20 minutes trying to clean the gun out and then the rain started coming down as it is now. So I came back inside, I put, took all the parts off, I brought them all inside. Then uh, I got the gun working. Then after that I had to hang all the parts back up because the sun came back out. And then I quickly sprayed them. And then as soon as I got done spraying them, the rain came back down. So I was able to get them all sprayed, and take them all back inside real quick. And get that gun cleaned. This time I'll make sure I don't make that mistake again. Because that really screws you up when you're ready to spray and that gun is clogged. Alright, so next up I'm going to spray some gloss black on there and try again when the rain clears up. Alright, I got a little bit of bad news from that steering box. Uh, they said that they could not rebuild the part because uh, the, the steering gear has a bad control valve and is fully rusted. So they want an additional $372 to machine the part. So I'm going to just go ahead and pay that. And I think I'll be, I don't know how much this is going to cost, like $700 probably by the time I'm out of it. So that's just the brakes on that, but I want to get it going and move on with it.